I grew up around winemaking. My dad has a little co-op winery. He has about 25 members. Everyone gets together, everyone helps out, makes a wine, and everyone gets their share and they get to take home the finished product. When I was old enough to hold a pan, I was put to work. And uh, we're making wine. By the time I was 21, well, I was a pretty good winemaker. <laughs> Finally able to have a glass. <laughs> A lot of people ask me what makes a Cabernet or what makes a Zinfandel, and it's actually the fruit. It's a different type of grape, grows in different climates. Um, you know, a Zinfandel fruit's a little bit a larger grape, more juice concentration, um, where Cabernet's a little bit denser, drier grape. The top grapes here are Cabernet. They're a little bit smaller, lighter in color. Um, again, going to uh, produce a heavier wine by trade just because there's less juice per skins, and the skins are what produces the color. Um, where the Zinfandel down here, it, it has more juice, uh, a little bit, you know, sweeter, fruit-forward wine. Our grape season is just once a year. It's in the fall, kind of anywhere from mid-September to mid-October. We've had two shipments this year because grapes come to their prime in, in different points of the season, depending upon the climate, how dry the weather was, how hot it was, you know, moisture, um, sun, all that kind of stuff affects the vines. And so the farmer waits for the, the sugar levels, which are known as bricks, to, you know, come into at the right level. And then also, how long is our hang time and the acidity and those kind of things. So he's constantly watching them as it gets closer. And then, you know, we never know. We just get a call, so they're ready to be picked. Get your trucker in here. Let's move them out. This batch of grapes looks really good. We were happy a couple weeks ago. We got some in, some of the best grapes that we've had so, so far. This is our third crush. So we're real happy this year we're using a different farmer. Um, and he's kind of known as one of the best. So we're real happy with the fruit so far. Make it a nice, thick, jammy wine. When we get our fruit off the truck, the first thing we do is go crush a few of them by hand to find out what the, the brick level is, which it's the sugar level. And then that's going to tell us what, what percent alcohol are we going to end up with. Um, an ideal brick level is kind of 23 to 26 bricks. This stuff's come in at 25, which is about perfect. It's slightly higher than 12.5% alcohol, maybe 13%. Um, so we like that. If it gets too high, you, you lose some of the flavor of the fruit. Uh, it gets to be a little bit hot, and so keeping it in, in a reasonable alcohol range is very important. Everyone asks if you know if Lucy's here to stomp the grapes, and she's not. We've moved from uh, stomping with our feet to now a little bit more mechanical assistance. We kind of manually with a pitchfork scoop it into a bucket, lift it up to our crushers. It, it goes through and it breaks apart. The pops kind of the skins open, destems it. The stems go through a little cylinder. The grapes fall through and the, the stems pop out at the end. So real basic process. With the size that I'm at now, I'm able to really handcraft the wine. It's pretty much me and some friends and family. It's the same friends years after year helping me and they know what to do and they know what they're going to get for showing up. So they, they come up and they're ready to work. And the fruit comes in, we get busy and we knock it out. And they're happy because they're going to get a bunch of free wine for the free labor they give me. It's a team effort. It's fun. We've uh, pumped the fruit into our containers here to get ready for a fermentation. And, um, John's going ahead and killing all the organic yeast uh, in there so we can have a good controlled fermentation and get the exact product we want. Um, after he does that, he'll go ahead and add his yeast and on a daily basis start feeding it and really getting it to um, kick into the fermentation, um, turn that sugar into alcohol. Winemaking is a labor of love. During the fermentation, I'm here almost 24-7 watching it, adjusting it. Um, that's the hardest part. That's the most time consuming. After that, you pretty much have to babysit it rather than create it. This right here is a primary fermentation. It's the yeast. It's creating alcohol. I put a little ice on top of here just to try to cool it down a little bit. It's pretty much in the peak of the fermentation right now. It's really revved up and cranking out a lot of heat. And if I can keep it cool during this stage, I'm going to get more fruit flavors and freshness and avoid the bitterness that might come 
with the warmer fermentation. See those bubbles coming up? That's carbon dioxide coming out and releasing it. The Zinfandel's just about done. In a couple days, I'll be pressing it. The berry like this is very important to turn the cap on it several times a day if you want it to be a big, dark wine. I like the hands-on approach and working it in a tub and with my press-down tool and actually physically busting the cap rather than using machines. I feel I have more control and I'm able to extract better color and better flavors. So what we did is we took the grapes and we crushed the grapes and then fermented the crushed grapes. And then we, after it was completed fermenting, we pressed it off in the press and then we have the new wine. The new wine is pumped into these stainless steel tanks where it settles. All the sediment in the wine will fall to the bottom. We're able to lift the wine off and store it in another tank. We move it around a few times until we find that we're not getting too much sediment anymore and the wine is nice and clean, clear. And at that time it's also going through a secondary fermentation and what it does is it makes the wine nice and smooth. It removes the bite. So that's what I'm doing in this stainless steel room. I'm getting the wine so it looks nice and clear and removing the bite. In this process, it takes about two months. And then we'll take the wine out of the stainless steel and put it into the oak storage. I'll let it sit in the oak barrel for about nine months. And then I'll take all the wine out of the barrels just to put it back in the stainless steel tank and let it re-blend I'll check some acid levels, sulfite levels, and then if I have to make an adjustment, I'll make an adjust, adjustment, and then I'll put it right back into these barrels and let it sit for about another six months. Winemaking is a science and an art. Um, you can do a little bit more science, or you can do it with a little bit more art. That's up to the winemaker. I use probably more art rather than science, but plenty of science to make sure my art is going to turn out the way I want it. Around 12 months I'll start tasting it and seeing if I feel if it has enough oak. If it has enough oak, I'll get it out and get it ready for bottling. If it needs a little bit more oak flavor, I'll let it sit for a couple more months. Because we're a smaller winery, we have a little bit more hands-on control with our fruit and the whole process. So kind of come out with a more handcrafted quality wine. Um, do just certain techniques that, you know, on a larger scale you can't do so that quality comes through in the end product. Located in downtown Fraser along US Highway 40, the Winter Park Winery prides itself on its wine, small town charm, and great atmosphere. Like the wine, it offers a bold, rich, and flavorful spice to the community and invites locals and visitors alike to come experience the festivities. Winter Park Winery, crushed, aged, and bottled at 9,000 feet. Ultimately, my goal is to make fantastic handcrafted wine.